Hello everyone! Today I am here to share with you all of the books I read in August. So for August I read a grand total of 12 books which is still really good. You guys know I've been reading a lot more lately because of quarantine and I think that's starting to decline a little bit because things are starting to pick back up with I don't want to say regular life. Who knows when we'll be back to regular life. But um, virtual schooling is coming up and I'm be doing that with my son as well as homeschooling. So things are starting to ramp up in that regard. So I think I'm having a little bit less time to read. But 12 books is still really good for me. So I'm not complaining. I've done a couple of um, recent reads videos where I talk about the majority of these books. So I'll link down below. I talked about more in detail because I like to try to keep these short and sweet. But that never happens here. So let's get into it. And as always, I start with my least favorite book. I read this month working up to my favorite. So the first book I want to talk about is She's Faking It by Kristen Rockaway. This one I really had high expectations. I'm not gonna say that. I thought it was gonna be a cute chick lit book and it was but it was just meh. I gave it a two stars which I don't ever like doing. I don't ever want to go into a book thinking I can't wait to give this two stars. No I don't I don't ever want to do that. This one is about a character named Brie who is really kind of struggling with life. She's kind of um she's a she's a DoorDash employee where she delivers food and things like that and she has kind of a crappy car and her sister's always bailing her out of financial trouble and things like that and basically her sister has says hey check out this one um social influencer that really tells you how to get on with your life and she does and so she decides to to like make this whole Instagram account and try to be an influencer and that's kind of what the whole book is about. I would say it's really about how you can fake it till you make it on social media like portray yourself in a way that you're really not in real life and I just didn't love it. I just felt the character whined a whole bunch and then she got into social media and was trying to portray herself differently and I just wasn't a fan of it. Of course she came around to at the end of the book and realized hey maybe you know I need to be myself and not rely on social media so much. You know, I can't say much about that because I guess my job technically is social media, but I think there's a healthy dose of being transparent while also being private. That's just me, but I just, I didn't love this one. Also, it was like the summer, also the cover screen summer. I mean, it's got a girl swimming in a coconut, but it wasn't overly summery to me. There's that. I don't want to go in detail about it because I don't like talking about books I don't love a ton. Moving on to a YA book. I have a YA mystery and that is They Wish They Were Us by Jessica Goodman. I read this because the plot sounded really interesting and overall it was okay. I gave it a 3 out of 5. I might change it to a 2. I'm still debating sometimes. I changed my readings throughout the year. That's just how it goes. This one is about, I don't even know the I forgot what the girl's name was. It's about a girl named Jill who is a part of the players and the players are like a really elite group in this high school where um, when you're a senior if you're part of the players like you can control everything. You get to pick out the eight people that are going to be the players and freshmen and you put them through these tests and things like that and you get all these things. It's like this big players network. So they have a freaking app where they have like test scores or like test answers and like college things. Like it's like the creme de la crop. But Jill is really not loving being in it because when she was in her freshman year when she was picked to be a player, I don't know why they chose it to be that, please forgive me, who knows, but one of her friends was killed during the initiation night and her boyfriend was um, arrested and put away but now years later she's wondering if he really did it. So they kind of reopen this investigation and things like that. I didn't love this because I didn't like a single character in this book which there are books that I read where I loathed every character but I still enjoyed the book such as you as Carolyn Keptis because I felt like that was the whole premise of the book but I really felt the author was trying to paint Jill in this really great light which she had some redeemable qualities but also I just didn't enjoy her. I didn't enjoy this whole players aspect of they can choose who's gonna make it or not in high school and hazing and stuff like that and I think you know I, I just didn't love it. Maybe it's my hatred of high school because I hated high school so much but I just I don't know with why mysteries are very hit or miss for me. There's only been a few that I've really enjoyed. The rest I just haven't liked and this is one of them. So I'd say if you like are a huge mystery thriller fan but maybe you want to try out some why I want. I don't I don't know about that one. Just gonna throw it out there. Next up, speaking of thrillers, I have Confessions on the 745 by Lisa Unger, I believe. I got this on NetGalley and the premise sounded really intriguing. Please forgive me because I don't have a physical copy and like an idiot, I forgot to write down notes. But it's about this woman who is finishing up at work at her office and she has like a nanny cam and she 
spies on her husband getting together with the nanny. And so she goes on the train home on the 745 and she confides all of this to a complete stranger on the train. And the stranger then confides into her that she's having an affair with her boss. And they just kind of confide in each other and they're like, what if like our problems disappeared? And then what do you know, the nanny goes missing the next day and it kind of tumbles from there. Overall, it started out really, really well. The premise was very intriguing. What if you told a stranger your best friends? And what if you told a stranger like your darkest secret and then like our problem and the next day like that was taken care of the nanny pretty much. Um, but I, as much as I liked the beginning of it, it got very predictable to me and I could see every single twist and turn. I guessed it. It was clear and it was obvious and I wish it was a little bit more hidden in that regard because I think I would have liked it a lot more. Overall, I gave it a three. It was solid. I enjoyed reading it. I was very intrigued by it and invested in it, but I just guessed every single aspect of it, which I'm not the best at anyway because some things go way over my head. This one, it was okay. I'd say it was a solid mystery thriller. If you're expecting it to be like one that's really gonna wow you, I don't know if that one's it, but I did enjoy it. Did I love it? No, I did enjoy it. Next up, also three stars, is A Deadly Inside Scoop by Abby Collette. This is my first cozy mystery book I've ever read. And what's different from a mystery thriller than a cozy mystery is, cozy mysteries are much more lighter. They're not gonna scare you, like there's not gonna be a lot of gore, talks about murder and really, just really in-depth things. There's also gonna be um, a lot less language, a lot less violence, sexual things and things like that. So it's a little bit, it's like, if Mr. Thriller's rated R, this is like the kind of the PG-13 version of it, which is great. Usually they're also set in small towns and it's just adorable. And I like this one. I think I just need to read more cozy mystery books. This is about a girl named Brawin who is reopening her grandparents' ice cream shop and then she finds this dead guy in the snow and it, she kind of figures out the mystery and goes from there. It was cute. It was adorable. I just think that I was, I think I'm not quite in love with the genre yet, but I think I could be, but this was a solid one and I'm happy I read it. Next up is another Net Galley book and that is The Roommate by Rosie Danon. Danon. I don't know how you say that. <laughs> this one I gave a three star. Did I say that? Who? Oh, mind. Um, this one was <laughs> very interesting. I forgot the character's name, so please forgive me. Um, no, I think his name is Clara. Clara is like this, um, I don't want to say socialite. She comes from a very wealthy family in New Jersey where they're very um, esteemed and things like that. She's always promised her mom that she would stay out of the tabloids. She would be the good daughter. There would be no scandals coming from her. And she's been in love with her best friend for like ever. And he lives in California. So she decides one day, you know, screw it. I'm just gonna move to California, profess him my feelings, and see what happens. And she does just that. And when she gets to California, <laughs> what do you know with the best friends like, oh hey, my band got a tour and I'm gonna peace out of here. You can still stay in the room that's in my house, but I subletted my room out and you're gonna have a complete stranger as your roommate and I'm leaving. That should just tell you about the character of that guy right there. So she's moved across country with this guy that just left and now she's left with a complete stranger as a roommate and that stranger's name is Josh and he um he works in the adult film industry I'll just say that and of course things happen with them and it kind of goes from there and I say this book is really uh, adult like it talks about the industry of adult film it talks about the pros and cons of it it talks about the fairness and unfairness of it and of course there's a lot of sexual talk I liked it I didn't love it I I like the romance, but I wanted more from it. I don't know. I could be the one person that just doesn't love this book because it has glowing reviews on NetGout. It has glowing reviews on Goodreads, and that's understandable, but I just didn't love it for some reason. I don't, I don't know. It was interesting, that's for sure. So I give it a three out of five. Next up is The Switch by Beth O'Leary. So this is her follow-up to The Flat Share, which she released last year, and I loved where I've talked about this in detail in my recent reads video where the flat shares more romance and this is definitely more women's fiction if you will. We follow two characters, Eileen and Lena. Um, Eileen is Lena's grandmother and they both kind of just like switch lives. Like Lena moves in to her grandmother's house like in this really small village in the country and Eileen moves into her granddaughter's like London flat to like start over and it's about them just trying to figure out themselves and um, just grow from there. And I liked it. 
I enjoyed it. I gave it a 4 out of 5, so that shows you I did really enjoy it, but I think it could have been a 5 out of 5 for me if Lena's chapters would have been cut out completely. I was bored with her chapters. I didn't really like Eileen is the true shining star of this book. I could read about that woman all day long. She was just an awesome grandmother, mother, friend, everything. She cared about other people. Lena just, she was struggling with grief because Lena's sister died recently and she just still is trying to find herself. And I liked it. I did give it a four. I just wasn't quite up there for me for the flat share. Again, I would say get your expectations straight for this one. It's not a romance really at all. Romance is very barely in this. It's more of a woman's fiction self-discovery type of book. Another ERG I read is Low at First Sight by Suzanne Park. Again, set your expectations for this one. Where this one is pitched really as romance, like a hate to love romance, it really isn't in my opinion. It's more of a woman's fiction again. We follow a character I forget her name, please forgive me. Um, she works at this video game company and she decides to pitch this idea randomly, like let's make the guy shirtless in a game and make the woman save the world and her idea gets to fruition and she's in charge of it. But nobody takes her seriously because she's a woman working in a male dominated industry. And not only that, she's a Korean American as well. So it's like, double-edged sword for her like she's like can't win can't lose like she's like can't win either way so she decides that she's going to prove them all wrong and make the best video game ever and it's about her doing just that it does have a teensy bit of romance but it's not the forefront at all it's about this woman navigating this really misogynistic workplace and proving to herself and every other woman out there that they are just as good as men in a male-dominated industry if not better. So I'd say the reviews on this one have been mixed because a lot of people have gone into it expecting romance and they've been disappointed, which is understandable because it's being pitched as a romance when really I don't think it is. I think if you want a book about a character like kicking butt and taking names in a male dominated industry, you'll like this one. If you're going into it expecting a grand elaborate romance, you will be disappointed. But I gave it a four. I enjoyed it. I loved learning about how video games are made and what you have to do and the deadlines and all that stuff. And I did really like the character and how she progressed a ton. So I would recommend it. Just again, get your expectations set for this one, I guess you could say. Next up, another ebook I read is Now That I Found You by Christina Forrest. This is a YA contemporary book. And this is about a character named Evie who is an actress. Her grandmother is an actress and her grandmother is very revered. Like she has won all these awards, been nominated for Oscars and things like that. And Evie's kind of following in her footsteps. She wants to be a great actress and she's about to get her big break when all of a sudden her best friend backstabs her and like puts this viral video of her up that really kind of implodes her career in a bad way. So she decides to go to New York to visit her grandmother to try to get her to come to this like film festival thing where that honors her and then her grandmother's like, I'm just gonna leave. So it, she goes on a wild goose chase trying to find her grandmother along with this guy named Milo who is a musician and it was really cute. I will say Evie Marie was a very hard character to like at first because she was very very much self-centered and very closed off but the more you got to know her the more you liked her and you know you understand because of what happened to her at the beginning of the book was just horrible. Like she got backstabbed in the worst way possible. How can you come back from that? But the romance it's really cute. Milo was great and it had great like just family vibes and also talked about the media and things like that. So I ended up giving this a four out of five. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it. It's cute. It's fluffy. If you want a great Y contemporary with a dash of like Hollywood in it, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. Your ebook, so many ebooks, it's going to continue on that way, <laughs> is A Rogue of One's Own by Evie Dunmore. This is a historical romance novel, my second one I've read ever. And this is the kind of sequel companion novel to Bringing Down the Duke, which I read this year and I really enjoyed it. We follow um, Lucy, I think that's her name, and she's kind of the head of the woman's suffragist movement. Like she wants women to be free. She wants them to not be controlled by their husbands because back in the day, like, if you got married, your husband like owned you. If he died, you messed up. If he just had everything. And so she really is fighting against that. And so she's trying to recruit people. And in that midst, in that mit mist, midst, I don't know, is Tristan Ballantyne, who is kind of like her arch nemesis. She's known him since she was like 10 and they really kind of loathe each other. But you can guess what happens. It's steamy. It's romantic. It talks about women's freedom. 
I really enjoyed it. I did think I liked bringing down the Duke a touch. You know what? I don't know. I like the romance in this one more. I don't know. I just did. But I think I like the plot maybe more and bring down the Duke. I'm not sure. It's a solid historical romance series in my opinion. But take my advice with a grain of salt because this is only my second one I've read. But I really enjoyed it. Next up is The Unraveling of Cassidy Holmes by Alyssa R. Sloan. This is another kind of Hollywood book, if you will. It's set in the 90s and we follow this girl group called, I think they're called the Glossy, yeah, Gloss. And, and we get to really follow Cassidy, who's a member of the Gloss group. She's known as Sassy Gloss and how they came to be famous and what she's had to like go through to get to that fame and how she's really done a lot. And we fast forward into the future where she has actually committed suicide. And Nobody quite knows why the group hasn't been the same because they broke up a long time ago after some things and then never really figured out why. So we follow in the future time period now of all the group that's still left alive dealing with like why did Cassidy do this also with their own lives and we also go back in the past to figure out how Cassidy got to be famous how she got to be a part of this group and it's really goes into a deep dive of kind of the really pitfalls and scary parts of Hollywood which I think we all know is there and it was just really interesting I gave it a four out of five a lot of people were comparing it to Daisy Jones and the six understandably so because they are both kind of books about bands that were really famous and fell apart but Daisy Jones and the six is a little bit more unique to me but I did really enjoy this one because it talked a lot about the toxicity within Hollywood with you know being quiet if there was rape involved or if there was drug abuse or if you know you were bribed or if you were forced to do things and the things you had to do to be famous and the weight in the image talk it was just a lot and Cassidy had to go through a lot so I would recommend this just know it's not quite the same as Daisy Jones and the Six which is fine because no book should ever be exactly the same but I did enjoy it it is a very heavier book I would say and a lot of the characters are really unlikable honestly but I mean that's how a lot of Hollywood people are I don't know <laughs> And my two favorite books that I read this month are both really cutesy wire romance that <laughs> I gave them both five out of five. The first one being Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting. This one was just so cute, so romantic, so steamy, everything I wanted. This one follows a character named Blair who is opening up this cupcake place called booze and buttercream because it's a cupcake place but also it serves really cool cocktails and then she's really excited for it because she's put all her money into it and a lot's writing on it and then the next store is a guy that's opening up a brand new like bar called Knight's Cap only like with a, a knight. You know what I'm saying? Like Knight's Cap? See, that's kind of punny. Um, and so they kind of battle and it's a hate to love romance but it is just so sweet. I mean there's not a lot of depth and other stuff to it. If you're just looking for a really good romance that's hate to love but steamy as well, I'd recommend this one. I ate it up. Get it? Because it's Kiss My Cupcake. But I enjoyed it a ton honestly and I'm surprised because I did not really like the last two books I read by this author but that always goes to show you to give an author another chance because you never know and I really enjoyed that one. Favorite book of the month should be no surprise because everyone's been reading this and everybody's been loving it and that is One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. This one is a take on The Bachelor The Bachelorette which coincidentally I don't watch nor can I stay. <laughs> I'm just not a huge fan of reality shows, but do you guys know which ones they are? This one is about a character named um, B, who is a plus size um, social media influencer. I don't know why I had struggled saying that. And she watches this show called The Squeeze, and one night she just writes this really rant Twitter review like, "This show is really not good for representation, for diversity, for for plus size rep." And so she actually gets oper the opportunity to be the next main squeeze bachelorette and she decides to go on it to you know prove to herself that she can do it and that plus size people need love too and it goes through like it's written kind of like each episode you meet all the suitors you figure out which one's kind of like the best for her and it was just really good as a plus size woman myself I felt very represented in this novel because I felt a lot of the things a lot of the same things she felt and I just really loved it. I think if you love The Bachelor of Bachelorette you'll love this book and I think if you don't love it much like myself you will still love this book and you'll get a lot out of it. So I loved it. Like I said a lot of people have been reading it raving about it and here I am doing the same thing. <laughs> so yeah those are all the books that I read this month. Overall a pretty good reading month. I don't know about you but I am ready for fall and reading like more kind of cozier 
scarier books. I don't know, but either way, I'm excited for it. I would love to hear what you read this month. Please let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.